My name is Juman Nentamarike. I'm the um, CEO and founder of Sahara Ventures. I've been working in the innovation ecosystem for some time now. And uh, I started working with Boone Innovation Hub, the first innovation hub in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. And uh, from there, I worked for like four years, and then I ventured out to support establishment of other innovation spaces across the country. And right now, I'm running my own business, but also I'm managing an accelerator in there called Sarah Accelerator. So today, I'm on, on, on business incubators. But among, um, among other things, I would also like to discuss a bit about the innovation ecosystem and how other players in the ecosystem can support you in terms of uh, finding proper finances for your, for your, for your business incubator. Um, because if, if you want to run um, a business incubator as a business, you have to think beyond an entrepreneur. You have to think beyond someone coming to the space and contributing for the service, um, just running a program which allows you to take equity from the startup. So. So um, to start with a general overview of the innovation spaces, and uh, the focus here will be to focus more on the, on, the, on the key pillars of the innovation space. What does it make uh, or what does it, what does it need to run a functional innovation space? Innovation space, it's yet doesn't have like a proper definition, academic definition, but it collects all these uh, initiatives from tech hubs, maker spaces, labs, co-creation spaces, incubators, living labs, M labs, impact lab, etc. Define them. You can all uh, call them innovation spaces. Uh, in Dar es Salaam, we have different innovation spaces. We have two maker spaces. One is called Moon Maker Space, and the other one is called Stick Lab. We have two incubators. One at the University of Dar es Salaam, and the other one is called the Technoama Business Incubator. Uh, we used to have an accelerator called Tino. Um, those are the same issues that we'll be discussing the future sustainability issues that have stopped the operations because we are private funded. Uh, um, to say today, um, an innovation space. Um, from my experience, because I don't have PhD in running innovation spaces, is composed of three key pillars. So the first pillar is the community and, and programs and activities that you run and coordinate in the space. And the third pillar is the management team, the team which is running the innovation space. Uh, the community is more of the beneficiary of the space, people who are benefiting from the service that you're offering. The program and activities, these are the activities that you have designed and the program that you have structured so that to help you run the space and make it active. And the management team is the people behind um, the brain of running the space. And then um, to get into details into the, into, the, into the space pillar. So the community is more of the beneficiaries of the space. These are the most important component of the space. Um, uh, the most important thing in the innovation space is the community, people who are using the space. Because you can always move around with people. I mean, you can always change the venue for the space, but it's very difficult to develop a community which is active and engaging and productive. So, and it is more than just uh, people who are using the space physically. It's about people who are following you online. It's about uh, people want to mentor your startup is about people who are following on what you do. And it's about people who leverage value. It's, um, and the community needs to meet, needs to engage, and need to interact professionally and, and socially so that um, you build a, a strong connection. It should be diverse. And also, as a community, you should have some sort of an identity or a culture which defines you. For example, when I was working with Buni. Uh, any member of Boone, we used to call them Booningers. So we share the same values. We love entrepreneurship. We love innovation. Uh, we love technology. So those passions and those things tend to connect us together. So the most important pillar of this is to make money using the space. First of all, you have to make sure you have a very nice community. Community with skills, community with passion, community with discipline. 
And then the second pillar is, 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 uh, is, uh, is the programs and activities that you have in the space. Because if you don't have proper activities and programs in the space, starting to think about how you want to finance in your space is becoming even very difficult because if the activities and programs that you run into your space doesn't create um, a way for you to generate income or to run your space sustainably, then it's, it's very difficult to even think about doing anything that can be able to generate money to you. So activities are mostly short time. These are the stuff that you do day to day. Sometimes they come in and plant. Maybe uh, a person is visiting your space and then you prepare a fireside chat with that person, that can be an activity. And some of them, they are structured, and then they can be occurring like monthly activity, let's say a startup grind, or a mobile Monday, or entrepreneurship forum. So these can be at recurring activities. And then your program can be uh, long-term program and short-term programs. For example, uh, when I was working at Buni, we used to have Four core programs. We used to have internship program, which we are doing with uh, universities. We used to have a mentorship program. It's more of a pre-incubation program for early stage startups. We used to have a community outreach program where we go to universities and recruit individuals with brilliant startup ideas so that we can uh, mentor them at Boone Innovation Hub. And then we used to have one program, it's a, it's, it's a, we, we used to call it a Boone Makerspace program, specifically for people who are passionate about electronics and, and, and making, providing a platform for them to build um, products. So programs are very important because with programs, you can then be able to search for partners from both public and private sector. Some of these uh, partners can be willing um, um, to support the program in terms of giving you funds to run the program, in terms of looking for other partners to support the program, in terms of taking the output of the program and using it on what they do. So you can even start to do uh, service outsourcing and skills outsourcing using programs. And um, programs usually are guided by the themes. And um, for example, uh, our themes were innovation, technology, and entrepreneurship. So anything which you were designing um, in one way or the other was following on, on that specific areas. So for example, you can, you can, you can um, through innovation, you can come up with a mecha space and try to do rapid prototyping for different ideas that are coming out from different clients. And then uh, for the technology, let's say you can run a tech bootcamp uh, for a specific client. Let's say maybe IBM is coming in with a new product in the market and they're looking to sell it in your country or in your city. And then you can tell them, hey, let's learn um, a two weeks boot camp to inform uh, tech guys from corporate sectors about your product. And then um, around entrepreneurship theme, then we used to do the same thing. Maybe partnering with a private bank or a local telecom company and help them to run a competition so that they can build their brand or as part of their corporate social responsibilities. So <clears throat> another thing, uh, another key pillar of an innovation space is the management team. So to run a space which can be able to raise fund and to run it as a business, you need a very strong team. Um, you need a team which is very dedicated to the community. You need teams that can uh, design activities. You need teams that can search for partners. And this, this, this is very important. So since running a space, you need to bootstrap and work with minimum resources possible. So always remember, it is not about the number of the people um, you have in your team, but it is about how you define their roles as, a, as, as your team members. Uh, and multiple roles can be assigned uh, to a single dedicated person, and then it can have the same impact compared to hiring three people and they don't know what they're doing in the space. Uh, the team should connect with the community and must have people's skills. So um, running an innovation space is like uh, learning a bar or a nightclub. People tend to interact with the service you offer. People go to the nightclubs and bars which have a good music, uh, which have a good food, which have a good quality services. So it's the same thing like running an innovation space. People are looking at what kind of value are you leveraging to them. 
So your team should be able to understand who are your key partners, key contributors, and key complementers on what you do, and how can you be able to um, deliver value to all this beyond the entrepreneurs. So if in your ecosystem there's a telecom company and you ask yourself, how can we tap into this value chain and be their partner when they're launching the next product? Uh, if there is um, a public institution which is working around the entrepreneurship, you can ask yourself, like, how next time when they want to run the entrepreneurship program, we can partner with them and do it together with them. Because uh, by leveraging value, by showing that you have direct value, then people um, can develop interest. Um, can develop interest on, 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 on things that you are, you are, you are, you are, you are doing. Um, so there's a, like a small exercise here. What are the three pillars of the innovation space? You can um, 